Hello, now this is going to be a quick video, sort of initial review on the Radius Scan uh, 701A Geiger counter. And this is a really cool thing. I was sent it for free by Radius Scan, so obviously I might be a bit biased because obviously when I get sent stuff for free, I'm generally more inclined to give them a good review. Obviously, if something was terrible, I'm not going to say it's good, but you know, when I've been sent stuff for free, it means I'm not really thinking all as much. I spent this much money on it. Am I that happy? But these generally retail for about 200 to 300 pounds sort of range for this particular model. Um, now, you'll notice that the background radiation appears a little bit high at the moment. Simply because when I was measuring samples of it earlier, I got a little bit of contamination on it. I managed to get most of it off, but that will be something I'll cover in the review. That unfortunately, this is still one of those Geiger counters where it's quite easy to contaminate it if you're measuring samples of it, and fairly hard to decontaminate. It's not exclusive to this, and that's always a bit of a worry if you've got an alpha mica probe, which we'll get onto. So there is a battery cover that's in the other room, just because I was charging the batteries separately. But you can charge them via USB as well. Um, so basically, the main interface of it obviously tells you what the micro sieve per hour dose is. There's lots of things you can change, so I'll put the clicker back on for now. So the back cover is quite interesting on this, so if we take it off, there you can see your alpha micro window, hopefully, if the uh, angle lets the light in right. So that's why it's a more expensive Geiger counter, because it detects alpha radiation as well as beta and gamma. Um, so it means it's a much more sensitive Geiger counter. Um, which is really good, but again, the problem with it having an alpha window means if you're measuring alpha samples, it's very easy to contaminate it. And again, so just be careful if you buy one of these for a lot of money, because if you contaminate it and then can't decon it, I guess that's going to be a bit of a waste of money. But um, anyway, so the back cover is quite clever. So you've got a sort of shielded bit there, where it's got the gamma symbol, and it means if you have that bit covering the window, in theory it means that only gamma is getting through in quite hard beta, if you have it the other way round, it will still be letting beta radiation through. Um, so you can have the window covered, sort of, I'd recommend you keep this cover on, except when you want to take it off to take a reading. But anyway, for the purposes of this video, let's do some readings about it on. So it comes with a nice little carry pouch, um, and also, you know, some booklets and things like that. As said, what I'll do later on is do a much more in-depth review of all the features, but in this one I just wanted to show the counter, sort of out the box and playing about with it. So, in here we've got some Autonite and Torbonite, gives off Alpha, Beta and Gamma. Um, I'm not going to open this actual lid up and risk contaminating the meter again, but if I just put that there. As you can see, quite a high dose coming through there. So what I'll do is I'll just turn the um, alarm off and sound off again now. But yeah, that was getting sort of up to 40 micro sieverts an hour, depending on whereabouts I think the crystals were sitting on. Uh, there we go, even higher there if I get them right over the window. Um, but as said, I'm keeping the um, these in there because I don't want any little bits of crystal to get in there. So, of course, one of the really cool things of this is stuff like a Mericinium 241 can be picked up. So let's demonstrate that. So if I just put the AM241 in my hand, which I know some people go, oh my god, why have you put AM241 in your hand? But you know, it's relatively safe to just do in your hand. So there's our two little bits of AM241. I don't know if you can see them there. And what I'm gonna do is just pop this over there like that. And then you should see that the dose massively shoots up. Ooh, if I can get that in frame. So that's saying about 12 micro sieverts. Let me just turn one of them over because I have a feeling one of these might actually have like a, it's a backwards bit of AM241 in theory. Yeah, that was. So there we go, that's much higher now. That's about 42 micro sieverts. But yeah, AM241 um, gives off a lot of energy, but most of the energy it gives off is alpha. So obviously you need a detector like this to detect it, because if you, you use a regular detector, as I can show actually with this by putting the back cover on. So let's now get the cover for this back on. Did I put it down there somewhere? There it is. Right, so if I put this on, uh, let's say, that way round, so in theory it should let some beta through as well. What will happen if I put a bit of AM241 next to it is basically, uh, as you can see, you're getting a bit of the gamma radiation coming through there, um, but it's not going to be picking up the alpha really anymore. Um, so that's why this is quite different to most Geiger counters, because obviously... Um, is it going to come up with a reading? So no data. Hmm, that's strange. There we go. But yeah, so that's why it's different to most Geiger counters, is because, you know, um, obviously it's got the alpha window on it, where most little units don't. But yeah, 
I'd say even with that though, you'll probably get a bit more radiation coming through there than the standard beta tube would allow. So yeah, it might be a good idea actually, even if you're um, detecting alpha with this, as long as you don't want a super sensitive sample, you can probably leave this cover on. I think the plastic would be thin enough that it would allow, you know, probably quite soft beta to get through or hard alpha, uh, which is something quite interesting. Now, annoyingly, I would love to show you the sample of carbon-14 I've got on this, because that would be very good to show with a Geiger with an alpha window, but I don't have that handy. Let's just uh, try a bit of tritium, um, which is quite an old bit, so it's not going to be all that active. But what I want to see is um, how the tritium reacts next to the alpha window. So let's put that up there. And is it going to get much of a reading off the tritium? Barely above background. It can just about see it's there, I think, but... Um, you know, again, tr the thing of tritium is most of the soft beta gets stopped by the glass of the tritium vials. So, let's just finish off with an old favourite, a bit of Fiesta wear. So let's put this flat on there, like that. That's getting about 40 microsieverts. So yeah, let's do this, but we'll show it with three different things. So. With the alpha window, uh, alpha window open, flat onto the Fiesta wear, it's about 38 to 40 microsieverts. With the cover in, let's say, the less shielded position over the window. You can see that's massively cut the reading down there, because it's down from about 38 to 40 to about 7 to 10. So, you know, that's cutting about off about three quarters of the effectiveness and then if we put this round that way with the slightly shielded side on there we should get an even lower reading I imagine so let's just pop that in there and get it in alright there we go now let's try that again like that and as you can see barely any gamma coming off of it. So this back screen is really useful actually. This is probably my favourite thing about it. Obviously I like the fact it's a compact Geiger counter with an alpha micro window. But yeah, the really interesting thing with this is obviously the fact that you can sort of use this to do a process of elimination to work out if it's alpha, beta or gamma. So fully open if you get a very high reading, it's alpha. If you put this section on there, um, you know, and you still get a high reading, then it's a beta or gamma source. If you go to that, it's either very hard beta or gamma. So that's quite a good little nifty thing. As said, the only complaint I have with this, and it's not really a complaint, because I don't know how RadioScan could have done it any different, but, you know, it's it's one of those problems, is that to measure alpha sources, you need the alpha window open, which means that there's a very high risk of contaminants getting inside the Geiger counter and permanently skewing your uh, readings. For those of you that don't know my therapy, which I love to bits, it permanently reads 0.6 microsieverts now because I got some contaminated rainwater in it and it constantly gives high readings. Um, so I think this should be possible to clean. Now, I'll look in the manual and see if RadioScan tell you how to clean it. But I think with most Geigers, the point is don't get them dirty in the first place. What you'd probably want to do if you're not all that fussed about taking alpha readings all the time is always keep the back panel on probably in that position and maybe keep this in an airtight plastic bag, like a sandwich bag kind of thing, because at least that way you're probably going to prevent the worst of the contaminants getting in. But yeah, I do really like this, you know, it is a really cool Geiger counter to get one that can read alpha radiation, you know, like that. Because as I said, you can get your bits of americinium and whatever. Yeah, it's all good fun. But yeah, so big thanks to Radioscan, of course, for sending me this because, you know, this is sort of at the top end of my price range that I'd spend on a Geiger. Um, they do have better models than this one as well. There we go. And you can see the Alpha getting in there because it's made that go really high. But yeah, so... Let's turn that alarm off. Yeah, so very good. I'll go over all the functions and everything else as I've had a chance to play around with this more. But I'll certainly be taking this up to wind scale, because that's going to be very interesting to take readings around the cellar field sort of area and see what they've uh, polluted the environment with. But yeah, overall I'm very impressed with it. Obviously, as I said, it is a 200 to 300 pound range Geiger counter. So, you know, make what you will of that. I think that will be above a lot of people's budget. But bear in mind, the reason it costs a bit is because it has an alpha micro window on the back. 
and in general alpha micro probes aren't cheap even if you're buying old sort of surplus mini monitors and things like that you know where you can sometimes get the alpha probes of them and the Ludlum probes so yeah I am very impressed of it as I said my only issue is because I like to test it with all sorts of samples I've already managed to get a bit of contamination on it but you know I don't see how they could really have got around that but overall I am impressed of it yeah obviously if it's out of your budget range then don't consider one like this but I think for the 200 to 300 pound sort of price range especially if you found a retailer closer to the 200 and 300 pound sort of range I'd definitely go for um, one of them at that range you know because Terapies I think Terapy Plus is over 200 quid you know and if I had the option of paying the same money and I could have a Terapy or this then I'd want this because of you know the much nicer display, the fact it can read alpha radiation. You know, the case is quite solid feeling. For I mean, it's obviously plastic, but it's fairly good plastic for what it is. Obviously, size-wise, it's very compact. It's smaller than the most modern mobile phones. And the really nice thing about this is the screen on it reminds me a lot of the one the Soex O1M had. Because the Soex O1M had a very limited range it ran out, uh, ran at even. But what I did like about the O1M was it had a very nice display. And I think that sort of encapsulates that. So if I just get the menu up, just so you can see what's on it. There's the gamma mode that we are on. Um, search mode. Detection mode. Beta. I assume that's beta flux. Um, log. Options. Information. And alpha. What's the alpha mode measure in there? Let's have a look. Yeah, that's... Um, I guess I'd have to um, play about with that more, but yeah. So log, let's have a quick look at that. And... I assume, assume that's showing you what the highest readings it's had are and the lowest readings and things like that, if that focuses, but yeah. As I said, I'll definitely read through it all properly before I um, do a full-length review of it. There might be like a 20-minute odd review. Um, but yeah, I am I am happy with it. I mean, obviously I didn't pay for it because they sent it me for free, so thanks again uh, to Radioscan for sending it. Um, but yeah, I do like it. As I said, it's just going to be more of a factor of seeing what the battery life is like the more I use it and, you know, hoping that I can't, you know, it's idiot proof enough that I can't break it. As I said, I'm going to try giving it another clean again now to try and get a bit more of the, um, you know, a bit closer to background again. Um, but overall, I do really like it. Uh, so thanks again to Radioscan for sending it me. And Surviving the Apocalypse, uh, NI Bunker, he's done a very good review of one of these. So also check out his video on it because I think he covers the stuff in that video really well on it. So it'll give you some more sort of thoughts on it. But yeah, there you go. Radioscan's 701A. Um, as you can see on the label there, yeah, I do like it.